Good morning, you beautiful people. It's Thursday, December 8th, and you are listening to The Goal Mouth, a podcast collaboration between Dirty Tackle, Howler Magazine, and The Total Soccer Show. I am Taylor Rockwell, and before we get started, a quick bit of Goal Mouth housekeeping. I'm fairly certain that most of our listeners will be keenly aware about the old adage regarding candy, strangers, and the acceptance of the former from the latter. And yet, on yesterday's program, George Qureshi, who happens to be a grown man, made it clear that he would willingly accept a cheeseburger from strangers, particularly if said food were hurled in his general direction. So, for the purposes of public safety and keeping our George safe and sound, let me say this. Folks, don't accept projectile sandwiches from people you don't know. It's just a bad idea. Now then, on today's menu of bite-sized soccer news, arrests in Bolivia relating to the Chapaquense plane crash, Claudia Ranieri versus Zinedine Zidane in a battle of no one saw this coming two years ago, Gianni Infantino dreams up new and exciting ways to make the World Cup an even more worldly affair, and a new study confirms that soccer players make a lot of money. Up first, I'm starting with serious news. According to Deadspin, the CEO of the airline involved in the Chapaquense plane crash has been arrested. La Mia Airline Company has been under investigation in its native Bolivia regarding possible negligence in relation to the plane crash that claimed the lives of 71 of its 77 passengers. Bolivian authorities arrested La Mia CEO Gustavo Vargas and two other employees of the small airline charter and interviewed them for up to eight hours regarding whether or not the airline followed proper safety procedures. Bolivian Attorney General Ramiro Guerrero later stated that the situation, quote, could easily turn into a manslaughter case, end quote. Sources have indicated that the flight violated minimum fuel requirements. Moreover, as reported by Deadspin, the pilot of the crash plane, Miguel Quiroga, was also one of the owners of the airline. This has led some to speculate uh, that his illogical decisions, such as flying in a straight line, uh, even though it violated aviation regulations, disregarding a planned refueling stop, and failing to adequately convey the severity of the situation, arose because of financial concerns and the desire to avoid arousing unwanted attention. In addition, the same plane was used to carry the Argentina national team home from a World Cup qualifier in Brazil. The flight time for that journey was four hours and four minutes. The plane's maximum fuel capacity allowed for a flight time of four hours and 22 minutes. I'm not mentioning this with an eye towards wouldn't it have been extra tragic if it had been Argentina, but more so towards the frightening apparent regularity with which La Mia was utilized. So here's hoping that going forward, each and every football association takes a good long look at the airline bids before accepting the lowest offer. Moving on to slightly happier topics, the Champions League group stage has come to an end and multiple scrappy underdogs have made it to the knockout round. Just kidding. The opposite of that is true. 15 of the 16 teams that advanced were seated in the top two pots when the group stage draw was initially conducted, Monaco being the outlier. In addition, each and every team in the knockout round plays in one of Europe's top six leagues. On the one hand, this is a bit of a bummer in that it rules out Minnows making it far to the tournament, though Leicester would probably be the closest in that regard. Uh, on the other hand, that means there are possible round of 16 features, including Arsenal Real Madrid, Barcelona Bayern Munich, Atletico Madrid Man City, and Dortmund PSG. In actuality, Leicester are statistically most likely to draw Real Madrid. So for those of you who had the foresight to put $5 on Real Madrid will one day play a Champions League knockout round game in Leicester way back in the summer of 2015, prepare to collect your millions. On Tuesday, Daryl brought us all a pleasant reminder of why FIFA probably shouldn't be automatically trusted when he reported that Sepp Blatter's six-year ban had been upheld. Anyway, current FIFA president Gianni Infantino wants to change the format of the World Cup. Again. His new plan calls for an expansion to 48 teams, which would be divided into 16 groups of three teams each. The top two teams in each group would advance to a 32-team knockout round. FIFA will discuss the proposal and several others at a meeting scheduled for January 9th in 2017. Other options apparently proposed by Gianni include keeping the tournament at its current size, expanding to 40 teams, which would be 10 groups of four or eight groups of five, or sticking with a 48-team format, which would feature a 32-team one-game knockout round with the 16 winners advancing to join the 16 teams that had qualified automatically. Every proposed option has its strengths and drawbacks, and I'm actually personally in favor of, well, maybe keeping it as it is, or if I have to choose an expansion, probably the three-team-per-group, 16-group format. That said, given the rate that new concepts are being drawn up, I'm inclined to paraphrase the famous line from Mark Twain. If you don't like Gianni Infantino's new World Cup expansion plan, just wait 10 minutes and you'll get a new one. And now for some breaking news. Footballers tend to make a lot of money, at least according to a new study conducted by a British marketing agency and a Norwegian financial consulting firm. The report, quote, has compared the geographical backgrounds, physical characteristics, playing styles, and club information of each footballer earning 100,000 euros or more per week to see what makes a top flight player, end quote. 
Among other things, the survey found that Cristiano Ronaldo, Gareth Bale, Lionel Messi, Ulk, and Neymar have the highest weekly wages in the world, Manchester United and China spend a lot of money on player salaries, and being a Pisces means that you aren't as likely to rake in the big bucks. That's right. The survey even notes astrological signs and, for those curious, makes it clear that it's good to be a Taurus, a Cancer, or an Aquarius. Oh, and shock of all shocks, the Premier League contains more of the world's highest paid players, 43%, than Serie A, MLS, Ligue 1, Bundesliga, and La Liga combined, 42%. The remaining 15% are hanging out in China. If it wasn't already obvious, I spent way too much time playing around with the data in this report, and I think my favorite finding is this. In terms of the FIFA video game skill rankings, only eight players with five-star rankings were in the top tax bracket. Interestingly, footballers with an average ranking of three stars or fewer make up 60-plus percent of the world's 100,000 euro or more earners. Hooray for mediocrity. And speaking of, that's it for today's Goalmouth. You can explore all these stories in more depth by subscribing to our newsletter. The link is in the show notes. If you're inclined to be an especially wonderful listener, you can subscribe to the Goalmouth in iTunes, tell a friend about the program, or leave us a review. The choice is yours. I've been Taylor Rockwell. Ryan Bailey will be with you tomorrow. But until then, I'll leave you with today's Goalmouth top tip. If you want to succeed, give it 100%. But if you want to make money, maybe just go with 60%. Oh, and love to Ryan's mother.